Gerson introduced the Witness 2311, a 2011 style pistol that can be bought for less than $1,000, but does it hold up to a thousand rounds of nine millimeter ammo? Welcome back to the channel. I'm David, and this is the Gerson Witness 2311C, which is the four and a quarter inch version of a 2011 style pistol. Now the 2011 is wildly popular, and for good reason. They're some of the best shooting guns that people are making. However, it's been prohibitively expensive. The Prodigy kind of got close on price, coming in at about $1,400, and this is going to be available with an MSRP of just $999. I actually bought this gun from an online retailer for about $930 before shipping and all that business. So this is a gun that is truly reachable by a lot of the people who are out there who have been curious about the 2011 style platform. We'll get into the reliability last. I wanna talk you through some of the features first, and then we'll jump into the thousand round test and talk about what happened there. Now realize guys that this is a sample one of one. I could have very well gotten a donkey of a pistol and we are going to get to see what the warranty group is like. That's a, it's called foreshadowing. You know, it wasn't that long ago when I was like you and I had a really ridiculously large wallet. That's right, this is my old wallet. But now I've adopted a minimalist lifestyle and adopted the Ridge wallets. And for you, dear viewer, there is a sale going on right now through December 20th. Using the link in the description, you can get entered to win a $4,000 Ridge bundle. That's a lot of skinny wallets, but it's not just skinny wallets. Oh no, there are key bars. It's like a wallet for your keys. And you may be trying to scan your screen right now to steal the information on my credit cards, but you can't because the material on Ridge wallets blocks RFID scanning. So check out the link in the description to check out Ridge wallets and you can save 30% bundling a key bar and a wallet now through December 20th of 2023. Thank you to the Ridge for sponsoring the video. Now let's talk about these guns. If you've had your heart set on this pistol specifically at the price point, I would encourage you to watch the other videos that are up on YouTube, specifically the two that I saw when I was doing research before recording the video is Smash Time and Such. Their experiences are going to be different. I do believe I got probably the worst one off the line. So the gun is a commander length gun, which means it is a four and a quarter inch barrel with a full size grip. The gun is going to come with a single 17 round magazine that's produced by Checkmate, which from what I understand might be making the Staccato 2011 mags, which means the Staccato 2011 mag should work in this gun. That's also foreshadowing. So the frame is actually this bit here underneath the slide and it is alloy. The grip itself is polymer. It's secured with a bolt here and a bolt there through the bushings. The grip itself is polymer and very reminiscent of the old STI Gen 1 grips. And it actually has amazing traction, very good checkering on the front strap and very usable checkering on the grip panels. The grip does feel a little bit long front to back. And if you've got big hands, the way they've chosen to sculpt the magwell is going to kind of press into your palm in sort of a slightly annoying way. It's not so bad, but it'd be nicer if it would have the scalloped bevel there at the bottom of the magwell like a lot of the other big hand magwells do. It is not a bull barrel, which has become popular specifically in 2011s. It is a bushing barrel, which means that it is a traditional 1911 barrel. There is a full length steel guide rod with a reverse plug and the gun has a short rail on the frame right there so you can hang lights and lasers. And the short rail in theory is supposed to increase holster compatibility. I found that this wouldn't work in a lot of the other 2011 holsters that I have. 2011s are always kind of a crapshoot because the frames and the grips are never quite exactly the same. So it always is a bit of a dice roll when you get one gun and try to make it fit in other gun holsters. The trigger shoe is a skeleton it's a nice aluminum deal. It is not over travel adjustable. It just is what it is right there. And it has serrations on the face of the trigger. The mag catch is kind of pretty far forward. The relationship between this beaver tail safety and the mag catch make it a very difficult button to reach to. So you will have to break your grip to get onto that button. The safeties are ambi and they have okay kind of positivity, but they're decent safety, decent safety profile. The slide has forward cocking serrations and is milled for an R. MSC. There's not a lot of information on the website as to what the slide finish is. I'm guessing that it's a Cerakote finish, but I don't know. These sights that it comes with are kind of three dot irons, but if you use the RMSC cut, you do lose your rear sight, which is okay. Now the gun did ship in the early 
ones will ship with the EAA Fardot, which is kind of a generic version of the RMSC Shield. And it's an auto adjuster, and I took it off the gun because it wasn't getting quite bright enough. There's also a bit of foreshadowing there. As far as fit and finish is concerned, you are not going to impress your friends who have experience with 2011s or fine 1911s with the fit of this gun. It is very much a production gun and like really the thing that people get excited about is the slide action and the disconnector with when you move to the slide to the rear it kind of hangs up you can kind of see that little hitch right there when i move it it wants to stay there it won't stay open on the disconnector but it's it's not smooth at all like the there's a good amount of wiggle it's fit almost like a 226 slide to frame because you know aluminum frame steel slide the fit is very comparable to that and that's honestly okay because it is a bushing barrel gun i don't love the grip safety profile i don't depress the grip safety all the way when i get a firing grip on the pistol it's depressed enough to make the hammer fall but it feels like i'm not pressing putting in enough pressure on the grip safety so like this radius right here i'd probably look for something that allows me to get a little bit deeper into the gun now the gun actually showed up coated in all this like oily black goo that smelled horrible so I did something I don't normally do, which was I gave it a full detail clean. I didn't pull it all the way down to pins and springs, but I really got after it with Q-tips and solvent and got all of that stuff off. And then I re-oiled it with the oil that I use on my competition guns and went to work. And the trigger, that's the one thing people like to talk about 1911 triggers. I'm pretty sure that mine is a bad one, but it is an eight pound trigger. I didn't know that they made single action triggers that were quite this heavy. It is seven pounds, 14 ounces pulled on the Lyman digital scale with an average of five pulls. The lowest I ever got it to pull was a 712 and the highest was 715. To me, that's not cool. That's uh, not the reason for getting a single action only gun. The trigger has very short throw, like the take up is very minimal and the over travel once you pull past the break point of the trigger is very short as well. If you consider that this gun is an alloy frame and it weighs you know 30 ounces or whatever it weighs the trigger pull weight is like 3x the weight of the gun which is never a good formula for success when trying to do precision stuff with pistols and that's kind of the fun of 2011 style pistols is they're supposed to be pretty precise. Let's talk about that thousand round reliability test. So the reliability of this gun wasn't super amazing. I and mean, we're gonna talk through it kind of like least offensive to worst offense uh, from the pistol, but we took it out four times with different round counts each time I took it to the range between about 300 to 400 rounds did a sitting. And the magazines that I used, I used the Checkmate that it came with obviously, but I also used Duramags from the Prodigy. I used Atlas mags. I used MBX mags in a couple of different flavors. Now, for those of you who aren't in 2011 world, Atlas and MBX are two of kind of the gold standard for these mags. They're very expensive and they're very good and they work in pretty much every gun. The least offensive thing that happened is you may notice when I'm shooting the pistol that the brass ejection is very erratic. What you want with a good 2011 or 1911 pistol is consistent brass ejection out to about the three to four o'clock position, you know, four to six feet or so. You'll notice the brass ejection on this gun is pretty erratic for me. I would get some brass that would go forward to about the one to two o'clock position. I'd get some that would come back at the five, six o'clock and hit me in the face sometimes. I'd have some that would go where it was supposed to go and it just had bad ejection. And what that tells me is that the extractor on the gun needs tuning, which is not uncommon for low cost 19, 20, 11 pistols. It's not that big a deal. It's an adjustment that you can make if you watch YouTube videos. Next is that you may notice that this is a Romeo Zero Elite, the far dot that was included on the pistol. It, uh, it worked its way loose. So within about 300 rounds, the screws did work themselves free on the far dot. And as a result, like the dot was blinking out, zero was shifting, all that stuff. So I had a wrench in my pocket that I would just tighten down the, after each mag to make sure that the optic wasn't moving. Well, that was a little annoying, but not the end of the world. Happy to report the Romeo Zero stayed on the gun, screws didn't walk out or anything like that when I relocked tighted them. Okay, next thing is within the first about 150 rounds, I had three rounds nosedive on the feed ramp. All right, this is the second time I've gotten nosediving in a different mag. This is a Dura Mag 17 rounder. I got it also in an MPA, which I think is just a staccato tube. So uh, this is, I don't know, maybe 200 rounds in, I've had two nosediving issues. It's another nosedive. This is on a Duramag uh, 
20 round tube with the Terran base plate and follower. This seems to be kind of a teething issue. It may be due to the mag catch and how it's holding the mag relative to the feed ramp. There's probably some more foreshadowing in there, but I had three nose dives and then the problem went away. Next bit is that the Duramag followers do not hold the slide to lock open. So that is two mags in a row where I was not, I was shooting left hand only and it, the mag didn't lock back and that was freestyle, mag didn't lock back on empty. It's three mags in a row where it didn't lock back on empty. I don't know why that is, but it would not engage the slide stop and push the, you know, slide to lock back on the last round. Toward the end of the testing, the final two magazines I shot through the gun would lock open on their second to last round. Oh, I locked back one early on this one too. Which is annoying, but it's not the worst thing in the world. That happened twice. I got two stove pipes where failures to eject where a brass casing, I think rebounded off the optic and got caught in the slide. I think that's what happened, but I'm not exactly sure because it happened when I didn't have my cameras out and wasn't filming. So I uh, had a failure to extract. Fair to extract about, I don't know, 520 or so rounds in. Uh, we're probably 750 or so rounds in. Got another case that didn't come out. And at this point, you're probably reacting to me using a teacup grip while shooting this pistol, thinking, why is he using a teacup grip? That's because we're getting into the reliability portion of the video, and I will tell you why. It's not just because I like 80s action movies and think it looks super cool and awesome, which it does. It's just not a very effective technique. Where I ran into issues, and I believe this is a free issue one of one likely due to me is that the mag catch stopped holding magazines in the grip of the pistol with about a round count of about 750 rounds the way it happened is I started shooting the 135 plus P at the end of the third time I had the pistol out and as I was shooting for accuracy it got pretty good accuracy actually that's 15 yards 10 shots critical duty 135 plus P hollow points fed them no problem but the mag release, I was dropping mags. I mean, considering I was shooting at freestyle with an eight pound trigger, I was getting, you know, an okay group at 15 yards, but the mag dropped free three times as I was shooting that group. And I just attributed it to the fact that it is a plus P ammunition. I assumed that the gun was lifting so much in recoil that my hand was getting onto the mag catch and depressing it and making the magazine drop free. Nope, that's not what happened at all. But that one, I can, I got lucky. I can rip it out. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because the next time out to the range, the first magazine went okay. The second magazine would not lock into the gun at all. And that turned out to be true with about, I tried I think nine magazines to finish up the round count on this gun and seven of them wouldn't lock into the pistol. The only two that did lock into the pistol were the Duramag tubes and the Checkmate tubes. They would actually lock into the pistol, but it wouldn't hold the 2011 magazines from Staccato, and it wouldn't hold the MBX magazines anymore. I don't know why we're talking about mag catches on 2011 style pistols, because that seems like a part that shouldn't be discussed, like the extractor I fully expected to be talking about, but the mag catch is something weird. So as it says right now, I'm gonna reach out to their warranty division and see what happens. I'm gonna mention the horrendous trigger and I'm gonna mention the mag catch is not securing tubes. And then I had a couple of nose diving things, maybe even mention the extractor seems to have not the right amount of adjustment. See what they'll do and what they come back with. So as I mentioned, this is one piece of data. It is not a data set, which is probably what you wanna look at. So look at all the other videos on this gun on the internet, see what their experiences are with them. It is a manufactured good and sometimes the bad ones sneak out of the factory. And I think that's very much what happened with this particular one. I will potentially revisit this gun after I get it back from them when the warranty work complete. I'll share that experience with you. So if you want to see that video, be sure you're subscribed to the channel. I was planning on doing a comparison of this to the Live Free Armory Apollo 11 and the Prodigy but we'll see how quickly they can turn this around because the live free is supposed to show up this week. As always, I appreciate you guys and I'll catch you on the next one.